Um, because Thorbert and Shilbert, like, ew, what are, what, what is that? What is that, man? Rub the sun or lick the moon. Scoop up your sunlight and moonlight teas. Link is down in the description. Bruh, it's either or. You decide. All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit lengthy, a little bit uh, kind of detailed because I really want to just go in at depth as possible when it comes to this video. Uh, I got a lot to say when it comes to this. Uh, if you guys know me, you come up to my streams. I talk about this topic all the time. I'm very informed when it comes to it. So I'm just going to break it down and just talk about all the best mainline Pokemon games. Yes, Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are mainline games. I don't know why people just don't know this. I just feel like people just don't read, bro. Here's a fun fact of Pokemon. All of Pokemon's information is out there publicly. So how people don't know this shit is just beyond me bro but we're doing this specifically based on plot i cannot stress enough i know so many people are going to be upset with me please listen to the video it's just plot man this is me in the future it's just plot man all right p-l-o-t plot yeah and i'm gonna be just as honest and open as possible so if you hate me you can't because i'm right <laughs> hate me but i'm genuinely confident in this Leave a like, guys. If you didn't cop the merch at the beginning of the video, we got hoodies now. The link is down in the description down below. Uh, we'll go with Oras. So we'll start off with Oras. These games. These games are really, really, really disappointing. I think it's the best way to put it. I'm a, I'm a huge Gen 3 fan, and I just think Emerald is a better game than this. You know what I mean? Even plot-wise, they did add more, which is really cool. So if this was to be specifically based on plot... I don't know, because Oras is actually more in-depth than Emerald, because it adds on more factually, it does. But it's also a whole different timeline than Emerald, because fun fact, Pokemon Emerald, Ruby, and Sapphire are different timelines than the Mega Evolution timeline. For whatever reason, if you did not play Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon X and Y confirmed and pretty much broke into its own timeline bracket, where here's, the, here's a timeline straight where they've never had Megas, then brrr, Here's another timeline where it just keeps going and breaks off into its own little timeline there with the timeline with Megas. If you also played the Usum post game, that also confirms it and backs that and it confirms that because they literally bring Maxi and Archie as well, which they've never heard of Megas. Then you have the, the cooler looking versions of Archie and Maxi where they, they, they know of Megas and Primals. So it, it's just a whole different timeline. Realistically speaking though, I think the Mega Timeline is really good. If this is specifically based off plot alone, I do think that this timeline is actually pretty good. I'm gonna put them in hella good based specifically off plot with the Delta episode and the brand new Mega Timeline. I think that's good enough to carry it in hella good. Uh, now, it's actually saying a lot that I just put Oras in hella good because I actually am an Oras hater. I think the game is extremely disappointing. Uh, but that's for a lot of other reasons that I'll probably make a video on in the future. But for now, for this video, I do believe that this is actually deserving of Hello Good. Uh, the new timeline is actually really cool. I like it. It's cool. So um, I think that's just really good as well, too. I mean, it just continues the longevity of Pokemon. Just when you think Pokemon is like gonna probably end on Gen 10, it's a billion dollar company. Psych, it's gonna be here forever, dude. We're gonna have like 50 gens. I'm not even kidding. We're gonna have like 50 gens, and we're gonna have like 20 gens remade by the time to like 2050, bro. No cap, right? But no, like if we're just going based off the Mega Timeline, I do think that they actually deserve hella good. And I actually will argue anybody on my stream about it. I'm not kidding. Like I will actually debate anybody about it. The Mega Timeline is good. The Death Episode is good. The Timeline with the new characters and this new knowledge they have of Primals and Megas, it's a two thumbs up. It's hella good. Um, I think the only thing that kind of leaves it away from Goaded is the progression. The progression of Maxi and Archie is kind of similar to Emerald. Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, even the ones without Megas. So, I mean, the designs are clear, though. Black and white. Now, okay, this is black, too. Whoops. Pokemon Black and White. I think Pokemon Black and White is really, really, really good plot. Easily deserves and goaded. I'm going to put it right there. Um, a lot of people say that plot doesn't matter when it comes to Pokemon. I think that's actually... Like, did you fall on your head and hurt it, dude? It's an RPG. Like, you can say the plot doesn't mean anything to you. To you. But it really grinds my gears, guys, when people always say that the plot doesn't matter in Pokemon. It's an RPG. Have you, like, like okay, RPG in air quotes because it's a child's RPG, right? It's obviously not as in-depth plot as, let's say, something like uh, like Final Fantasy. Like, that's an actual RPG, you know what I mean? Or like Xenoblade. But it's still an RPG. Role-playing game. The plot still matters it literally still matters you cannot say the plot doesn't matter like you just you just can't if you want to say it doesn't matter like to you or it wasn't important to you sure but like i don't know dude that that's just my take that's my little rant i think it's as people say the plot doesn't matter it just just stop but regardless so 
Point Black and White, I do think is really deserving of the goaded tier. Like, I mean, they had great plot elements. I mean, N's a great character plot-wise. I think Getz is a fantastic rival, or sorry, villain. He's probably one of the best villains we've ever gotten in Pokemon. He's easily up there, dude. God tier theme great villain you know what i mean the guy it, it's kind of dark as well dude this guy's abusing literally everybody and manipulating all of his followers especially his child he's abusing and manipulating his child now that's pretty dark for pokemon game it's pretty dark that's pretty dark in comparison to freaking gold and silver wow dude buildings burned down wow now we have a raikou that's been revived by whole oh, wow like, you know what i mean so i think it's really good i think he's definitely deserving up there you know what i mean um, plus the whole, like, it's really, really, really interesting. People actually don't know this. At the end of Black and White, your main character actually joins a police force with Looker, and N actually feels some sort of, like, loneliness, and he feels incomplete in a way, because he actually misses us, because we changed him. So, like, there's, there's, it, it goes in pretty deep. If you read the manga, it goes in deep, because people say the manga doesn't really matter in terms of the plot, but the manga is literally the game's plot, but, like, like, just more, like, adapted on. You know what I mean? Like, they take the plot of the game and it adds on more to it because the game comes out first. That's the source material is the game. So, so a lot of people say the manga is not canon. Sure. But, I mean, it quite literally takes the plot of the game and adds on more to it. I don't know, man. I don't know what you want from here. I don't know. Regardless, so, definitely deserves it to be up there at the top. I mean, it's just, it just great, man. It, it, it's great. It easily deserves it. The same thing with Black and White too. I mean, these guys, it, great. I mean, easily the best sequel we've ever had. Now, people are gonna be like, sequel? Yeah, we only have two sequels. We have Pokemon, uh, what is it? Gold and Silver and Pokemon Black 2, White 2 are the only two sequels we've, wait, am I, I'm not going crazy. Yes, okay. Those are the only two sequels we've literally ever gotten, ever. Like, we haven't gotten any other sequels before any of these games. Like, well, outside of Gold and Silver and Crystal, but those are different. I'm talking about that another day, right, dude? But Black and White 2 are easily up there as well, too. I know a lot of people actually don't like these games. Now, people think it's just such a crazy thing to say. Like, just because the internet is slowly starting to grow on these games doesn't mean the mass majority still likes these games. You know what I mean? In comparison to other main title games, they have sold the least. They, they like, literally every game outsells it. I'm not kidding. Every generation outsells Pokemon Black and White. Now, you guys can look at it right here. We have red and blue at 31 mil. We have, uh, this is like c counting everything. We're not going to do all that, right? Red and blue at 31 mil, obviously 23 mil right there with gen two, gen three, the 60 or 16 million Ruby Sapphire, right? You have 17 mil, which did outsell for uh, gen four with diamond and pearl. And you have gen five sitting at 15.6. You have X and Y and Sun and Moon and Sword and Shield that all outsold it. So out of every main title game, I mean, dude, now you can kind of see it for yourself here, guys. Let's go at 13 mil. Black and white sold at 15.6. Let's go almost came close to actually outselling black and white. Like, I mean, dude, even Fire Leaf Green, which is technically a, like, like a, it's a main title game, but it's a remake. That came close as well too, like three mil diff. So black and white was not received well from the masses. I don't know why this is still shocking for people to hear. All this hate that you see on Gen 8 was quite literally there for black and white, dude. I'm not kidding. Like, if you know, you know. But a lot of people just don't know this. They think black and white's a widely loved game because of all this, like, the internet's always talking about black and white. Like, no, dude, people are coming around to it now, dude. People are coming around to it now. And even then, the majority still does not like black and white. Specifically, dude, because they don't like reading. I'm not kidding. People will generally tell you they don't like reading. I'm not kidding, dude. It's the same argument people don't like plot. But it's weird then because when you got X and Y, they complain about no plot in X and Y. So then they give a sun and moon, which is a big plot, then they don't like that. I, I don't get it, man. I don't, I simply, Pokemon fans are just, they're hard to please. I don't get it, bro. But regardless though, Black and White 2 is easy up there as well too for one of the best plots. I mean, it literally added on to the whole Team Plasma. I mean, we even got the, the Shadow Trial, which the whole cool theories about them being like the first gym leaders of the, the, the trio chefs, boys, but... That's a cool theory, right? Not true, but it's a cool theory, right? Or at least confirmed, but it's a cool theory, right? Uh, same thing with Getz as well. Dude, the comeback. The comeback with him and the freaking old dudes. That was tight, bro. That was tight. You know what I mean? Seeing and again, it was just great, man. It was just great, dude. I mean, he also did just absolutely raw dog Opal Lucid City. Can we talk about that? Opal Lucid City got cummed on, bro. It got cummed on. That's plot. That's hop to your plot, dude. But no, regardless, it just pretty much added to the story elements of black and white. It just went beyond, which is really cool. And the gym leaders were involved. That's not something that we've seen in a long, long, long time. Uh, that could have been happening in Gen 1. I'm not kidding. That could have happened in Gen 1, but it did not. So I just thought that was really cool. Regardless, so black and white easy deserves up there for top tier plot, right? Then you have the OGs, red and blue. Now, I'm going to be actually that guy. I don't think their plot was bad by any means at all. Sometimes simple is good. You know what I mean? And this plot is extremely simple. It's a boy who's taking down this government. 
uh, you would not think about it like that, right? Like, he's pretty much you're playing as Red, and he's going on just trying to adventure his journey, ten your little boy, right? Next thing you know, he's taking on an entire, like, 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 Giovanni's, like, mob boss mafia facility, dude. It, it, it's actually pretty dope. I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. And it's really cool how well they do it in the manga, but especially within even the games as well, too. It's simple, but it's tight. You know what I mean? Giovanni the boss, the Don himself, dude. He is literally capitalist god. Giovanni, dude, he is running everything. He's a secret gym leader, dude. He oh, he is rich as absolute donkey fuck, dude. He is involved as Mr. Fuji as well as freaking Blaine, bro. I mean, even characters like uh, Lieutenant Surge and Sabrina and Koga were also involved within Team Rocket schemes, dude. Which is, you know, that's actually like not really that adapted in the games. More long so adapted on and carried on within the manga. But it's still a pretty cool thing to add on to, right? But if I wanted to count up the just the games... I think it's extremely cool as well, too, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just so cool, dude. Like, tell your little boy, going up against a whole mafia. Like, it starts off simple. You're just 10, catch on all these creatures, right? Insects. Next thing you know, you're taking on literally the mob boss mafia who is donating funds to build an entire creature, by the way. He built Mewtwo, bro. With the help of Mr. Fuji and Blaine, that boy built Mewtwo, bro. With all these scientists, that boy built Mewtwo, bro. That's tight. There's so many, like, it expands. To how much shit that Giovanni does, you know what I mean? It even bleeds into Gen 2, but we're we're not gonna talk about that. Regardless, so I actually thought that it was it was decent. Like I'm not gonna lie to you, dude. Like I think it definitely deserves mid. Like Fire Leaf Green is is you know it's it's the same plot, dude. So we're just we're just gonna put that in there. It, it's I mean it's got post game, which I think is really cool. The Sevy Allen post game plot of learning more about Lorelai or even the the Team Rocket trying to get in on Groudon and Kyogre. I thought that was tight, man. I actually thought that was tight, you know. Um, well the the crystals in the in the post game, I, I thought that was cool. But regardless, though, I didn't think it was enough. So I mean, their plot's actually like decent, you know what I mean? I I, I think it definitely deserves mid. Like it's actually not bad you know like it's actually not now this what happened what happened bro what what actually happened here what happened tell me that i i i listen guys everybody listen guys if you know me you know me for the past three to four years now i've actually become ranting about these games forever i have i'm not kidding i actually been ranting about these games forever i'm probably gonna make a specific video dedicated to the rant of these games like i've been ranting about these games forever bro they are just so like plot wise because this video is all about plots just just remember that just remember that before you start bringing all the pitchforks at me gen 2 fans it's plot plus i just love the beta gen 2 fans i could do it all day regardless the plot in this game what happened what what happened there is a there is a mold there is something that's been built there in gen 1 take that and go beyond Similar to what they did with the sequel. Black and white. Great plot. There was a there was a build there. There was already a structure. Take that and go beyond plus ultra. And they did that in black and white too. But you literally don't do that in crystal and golden. Even in hard gold. They don't do that, man. They just don't do that, bro. What happened? You know, like, especially hard gold and soul silver. Yes, I'm coming at these games. Everybody loves these games. I actually like them as well too. But I'll be the first to tell you their plot is non-existent and just dog shit. It's actually, I know I'm going to get so much hate, but I don't care, bro. I actually don't care because somebody needs to say it, dude. Somebody needs to say it, bro. It's like the plot of these games is non-existent, bro. Like, imagine if, like, the whole thing you have of, G okay, these will be put, put in eh, specifically due to the post game of Celebi taking you, like, into the future or some shit like that, where you get to find out that Silver is actually the son of Giovanni. That, confirming that was really big that your your rival that is pretty much an asshole right it's abusive asshole rival which everybody just jerks off to the nuts right like this guy is essentially the son of the boss giovanni who literally ran kanto dude he literally ran that bitch he created one of the strongest different one of all time by the way another video but like it, it just blows my mind you know what i mean it blows my mind truly that they just like i get it right a lot of i don't even think like these games specifically due to the plot so if I'm ramming the plot right now, I think y'all are going to be all right because I don't even think a lot of people even like these games due to the plot. You know what I mean? I I, I don't. I think people like them because they're pretty, which 
<laughs> Regardless, though, dude, like, it's just non-existent, dude. Team Rocket in this game is just non-existent, bro. Like, what I mean that is, I mean, their, their weight is non-existent, bro. There's absolutely nothing there, dude. You have the main admins, but they put in hard Gold Silver, which aren't even in Gold Silver, by the way. But the admins just in Gen 2, bro, the, for Team Rocket, bro, it's actually Resident Sleeper. It's bums, man. Non-stop bums. The Slowpoke thing. Nah, nah, dude. They could have done something at the towers, bro. They could have literally had maybe silver. You face silver, and you know how cool it would have been if silver would have eventually taken over Team Rocket within the plot of Gen 2, and then you have to take on silver. Like, that would have been tight, bro. That would have been tight, bro. That would have been tight, but then silver finds himself and finds love for Pokemon. That's nice. That's nice, right? Character development. That's nice. Shout out to silver for finding love. That's why he has a gold bath that evolves a friendship. That's nice, man. But I don't know, man. Like, it's just I have so many complaints. But easily a big one is the plot. You know what I mean? Easily. Because I see how Pokemon did their sequels in the future with Black 2, White 2. Those are sequels from Black and White. Then you see Gold, Silver, Crystal, which if for whatever reason, people, I, I don't know why you would notice. But they're, they're sequels of Gen 1. They are quite literally a continuation of Kanto. They're a continuation of it. It is the smallest region with a, a next to non-existent bare bones plot with hardly any plot development or plot devices like what, what what is it what is it it's just silver finding love what is it bro what is it the gym leaders don't do jack you know what i mean dude like the, the shit that they tell you is also boring as fuck dude like i know people are like, oh you can just say about any game nah bro you, you hear about lucena surge you talk about his ward state war days bro sabrina has powers it's a diff bro it's a diff man you know what i mean dude it's just simply a diff bro so, I don't know, man. Like, even the continuity that they did in Kanto, when you go to Kanto in these games, it's actually worse. It's actually worse Kanto when you go into these games. So, I, I don't know, dude. Plot-wise, I'm just ramming at the plot, guys. I'm sorry if you're going to hate me for it. I literally don't care, dude. I'm going to be fine. I'm going to be all right. But if you're mad, I you got to do better, bro, because I'm right. Like, the plot in these games are just non-existent. It's like nothing is there, dude. I just don't get it, man. I just don't, but I mean, it's also one of the most beloved games of all time. So I don't think people really give a shit about plot because you look at the games up here in top with plot. People hate Oras. That's me, yes sir. People hate Gen Five, which I mean, it's one of the most heaviest plot games in the, it, like ever. People are weird about Gen One, right? They, I, yeah, it's fifty-fifty. Either you like it or you don't. I'm not kidding. It's really fifty-fifty. Um, but I say that, but it's a vocal minority fifty-fifty. Like majority loves Gen One, bro. Charizard sells, bro. Diamond and Pearl, I thought it was a really, really, really good plot as well, too. Um, DPP, DPPT. I think Platinum, the additions that Platinum did definitely deserves good because of the Distortion World. I mean, you literally got to see Cyrus regret everything that he did. Like, you see a man that has just been so stuck in his ideals. He's Tunnel Vision Terrence. He's stuck in his ideals. He's like, bro, shut up. I got this, y'all. I'm going to go do this shit. I'm going to make a brand new world and delete this world that we're in because I know that it's the right thing to do. It's like, it's like, he's a trying to think he's a good guy. He's like, I know it's the right thing to do, but this world is sick. This guy's part of his light Yagami. His world is rotten, dude. I'm gonna make a brand new world. Boom. I know it's gonna be great, guys. Trust me. I know it is. Come to find out, he actually goes to a completely different world, Giratina's world, the distortion world, and he regrets it immensely because he sees the, he sees that this power is way beyond the limitations of what he can hold. You know, you get to see a man have complete regret, and I think that's really cool, you know what I mean? You don't really get to see a villain like that. You saw that in Emerald and Ruby Sapphire, where they're like, damn, bro, like, I really thought I was that nigga. I really thought I had that shit. But it just kind of felt lame because they're like, bro, what's going on, dude? Yeah, you know what I mean? Like, if it was added on more, I think it would have been a lot cooler. Easily would have could have been goaded, you know what I mean? Um, but that's what Platinum is. It literally does add more to that, which I just feel like it kind of some plot similar devices with uh, Gen 3 and Gen 4. You know what I mean? Like the whole like I'm going to take over this like OP thing and then I'm going to uh, see where that brings me. You know what I mean? But I think Cyrus's ideas are a little bit better. I mean, you have a brand new world versus fucking Archie's. Like, I want to drown the world. Like, bro, what? We're all going to die. We can't breathe water. Like, <laughs> what are you doing, bro? And then Max is like, you're going to drought this world. Bro, we need water to live. Are you stupid? Uh, those guys are different, bro. They're diff. They're, it's a diff. It's a diff. But Cyrus, I think the Giratina plot really just made it up there. Diamond Pearl is not that bad either. He did actually technically create the new world as well, too. He's one of the few villains that actually did succeed. He actually did. He did technically succeed. With Kyogre and Groudon, they almost did it. He almost drowned the world. He almost drowned the world, but they didn't actually do it. They, they were getting to that point. But Giratina actually made the new world. He was actually sent to a different world, but the new world was in the sky. It was actually made. Diamond and Pearl, you quite literally see the, like, the slow destruction of our world. And you see 
the new world up in the sky. It's a, like a, a ripple in the, the sky. Like you actually see it with your two eyes. So that actually happened. So there's not many villains I can say on this list that actually did their thing, you know? And he actually did their thing. So yeah. Well, actually you could probably say a lot of villains did their thing, but yes, he, he actually did it. But I really like seeing the regret. You know what I mean, dude? That was really cool. Seeing a lot of people complain that Cynthia didn't do anything because we're a 10 year old kid in a completely different world with pretty much the devil. You know what I mean? This banished thing that was banished by God, Arceus. You know what I mean? So we're a 10 year old in this brand new distortion world where everything's flipped upside down with gravity is fucked and everything. No life at all, by the way. So yeah, trees can grow. So it's like people complain about that a lot that Cynthia didn't do anything. I think Cynthia was more of a guide. She wasn't supposed to do anything. I get the whole argument that we're 10 and Cynthia should do something, but I don't know, man. Look, I don't write these. I don't write this shit, bro. All I know is that champions don't really do much, you know, which you would think they would, right? You would think they would, but in Sword and Shield, Leon actually does a lot. He just, he just fails. He actually does attempt. He just fails. Um, Emerald, Ruby, Sapphire, I think I'm also going to put in mid as well, too, just because they don't have... Uh, the actual mega timeline. I think the mega timeline is actually a diff. You know what I mean, dude? Like, in terms of plot, in terms of plot, the mega timeline is actually a diff. Um, you get to learn about a lot about megas as well, too. I mean, you literally see Steven Stone, the stone expert, mega stones. Come on, bro. The Delta episode. I think the Delta episode is a major diff here when it comes to plot. If there was no Delta episode, I definitely would have put the, these three up as well. It's hella good. But regardless, the Delta episode is the gap. You know what I mean? The Delta episode is truly the gap. Now, do I think Gen 3 plot is on par with Gen 1 plot? Um... I think we're gonna leave this uh, to the later in the video. I definitely wanna talk about this more. Um, I do think Gen Plus is actually not bad. Um, I think it's simple, but it's nice. I think it's simple, it's really nice. You know what I mean? And then you have the whole like uh, geo freaking extremists, you know, geology extremists of Maxi and Archie, which is cool too. But, you know, I think Emerald is really cool as all that too because as both teams are the villain. You know, both teams are the villain, which is really cool. I don't know, I'll go back to that in a later video. Let's go. Mmm. So the thing about Let's Go is it is actually on par with the plot as well, too. I think the thing that kind of ruins it is, I mean, Trace is just, he's kind of cringe. Uh, I'm just gonna, here, I'm gonna make a row below. I have to, I told you guys, I'm gonna be specific as possible. Hang on. We're gonna do this as eh. Hang on, dude. We're just going to put these in Trace because the only thing that ruins this is Trace. If they didn't have Trace, I feel like this would have been a lot better plot. It would have been just exactly one-to-one -one plot of Gen 1 with the new additions of Lorelai actually coming through. That was tight, bro. Like, you actually got to see an Elite Four member because the whole point of Elite Four members is to be mysterious. That was kind of tight, you know what I mean? But Trace is... How do I put this? Um, Trace is cringe. He's simply cringe, nothing more, nothing less. He's quite literally the definition of that. He actually ruins the already decent plot that Gen 1 had, so. Yan, you didn't get to really see the development of Blue. Um, Blue's kind of more like this, like, he's kind of like a god trainer in this game, you know what I mean? He's like, oh yeah, I'm fucking Blue, I do that shit, bruh. From my fae, yo. Like, that's literally Blue in this game. Versus Blue in this game is like, yo, he's like cocky as fuck. He's like, yo, I'm that fucking dude, bro. Run my fade, he gets faded, then he learns to accept loss, and then he learns to become a better trainer. Like, I, I thought that was cool, but I don't know. Regardless, dude, I don't know, dude. Trace is yawn. Now, these games. Let me tell you why these games have arguably, debatably, the best plot in Pokemon history, dude. Let me just say this right now, right? So, oh, also, Usum as well, too. Usum, uh, uh, fuck, uh, fuck yeah, dude. I know I'm going to piss so many people off because I don't think people are going to understand that I'm talking about plot only, man. Sun and Moon has such a good plot. It has such good characters. You have to think about that. Characters really make or break the plot. It is a lot of characters as well, too, and a lot of them are good. A lot of them are good. You got Nanu, you got Acerola, dude. You got a lot of good characters. Lucimi, Lily, a great character. People find her annoying. I, I, what? But then they think Wally is your soft boy child. Make it make sense, bro. You can't love one and hate one when they're kind of similar in one way, shape, or form. How? People don't like how because he's happy. Seek therapy. How do you hate somebody who's happy? You, you are too angsty. Seek therapy, bro. How's a great character. 
Plus, with Usum, he, he actually becomes more serious. He's not as goofy. He becomes more serious and actually tries to take over his grandpa. And he literally does. He surpasses his grandpa in Usum and becomes a champion. Versus Sun and Moon, where he doesn't. He's still kind of in that shadow. Kind of towards the end, though, he slowly breaks away from that shadow of his, his grandfather. But especially in Usum, when he becomes a champion, he really breaks through that shadow. So, I'm telling you, dude, it's genuinely a diff. Like, I don't know how many times I gotta tell you this. It's actually a diff, bro. It's a diff, man. So, Sun and Moon Gen 7 plot is genuinely up there. I mean, dude, you have this mother who is constantly... Dude, she kills Pokemon. She's abusing her children. They both go on separate paths, but together they come through at the very end to support their mother, who's pretty much deranged and lunatic because she lost her husband. Turns out her husband is actually around, dude. So, it's, it's such a good plot, dude. It, 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 genuinely, the emotions I went through feeling it, the development of the development of Lily, the development of How, the development of Lucimi, the super development of Gladion, dude. You know what I mean, dude? Kakui being a fantastic role model and guide. Fantastic. Easily the best professor we've ever seen, ever, dude. Ever. The trial captain's actually doing something. Actually doing something for their own domains, dude. Even the kahunas, bro, they take on UBs. People always talk about gym leaders not doing much. Bro, in this game, the technical gym leaders, they actually do it all. They take on legendary bees from another dimension, from another world, from another timeline, from another universe, bro. That's insane. Plus, also, this game just completely just dropped the bomb on Pokemon lore, bro. It's like, Ultra Necrozma is literally star level, bro. Star level. Ultra Necrozma dump trucks almost every Pokemon on this list of box art outside of, obviously, Dialga, Pagia, Giratina, and Arceus, bro. Like, he, he's close to their level, bro. Ultra Necrozma is actually OD, bro. That thing is actually broken as hell, dude. It, it just blows my mind, dude. Like, I don't know. The, the whole concept of Sun and Moon is just, it blows my mind. It, like, I have a lot of video topics I'm going to talk about in future videos in this video, but genuinely, I, on my god, on my actual heart and soul, these games are so underrated. They're genuinely so under. They get way too much hate for the insane plot they did, the recurrence of old characters. They did everything right. I feel like people just don't like the pacing, which I understand that, actually. I'm not, like, this biased guy that doesn't get it. I get it. I understand the pacing. It was slow. Island 1 feels like it's 45 years and I really do feel like it's because of the 3DS engine. If this game was on the Switch, I think everybody would like it because the pacing would be a lot better. If Sword and Shield was on the 3DS, it would be the exact same pacing as Sun and Moon. I'm not even kidding, bro, because why? Because they reuse the same assets from Sun and Moon. They literally do. It was confirmed. So, regardless, dude, I don't know. Play Sun and Moon again. Watch Sun and Moon if you want to. Like, I genuinely believe it is one of the, like, it's just such an underrated Pokemon game. The plot really carries it. The plot is really good. The plot is really good. If you don't care about plot, you probably don't give a shit about Sun and Moon, and you like your fucking boomer games down here. But listen, man, truly, I, I, I've I been defending Alola since day one, bro. It's, it's, it's the GOAT, man. We don't got to say much about this. Even though I have a lot to say about this, we don't got to say much about this. I genuinely believe these could have been some of the best Pokemon games when it comes to plot ever, dude. I mean, they created the brand new timeline of Mega Evolutions. You had Black and White were on a consistent timeline. From Red and Blue to Black, we had a very consistent timeline. Then X and Y came out where it really changed up the game. If you keep up to date with Pokemon lore, it really changed the game. Or if you give a shit. Not a lot of people give a shit on Pokemon lore. I actually give a shit. It really changed the game. I mean, the box art cover mons are literally deities of the, the god of death and the god of life. Like, it, it, it's actually crazy, bro. And it's North mythology as well, too. It's very cool if you like that. Uh, you have Zygarde, who's literally the Earth Defender, which is very hand-in-hand -hand with Rayquaza, who's also the Earth Defender. That's why he doesn't fuck with Deoxys, a literal life form coming into the Earth that's unidentified, so he has to fuck that nigga up. You know what I mean, dude? Xerneas and Evolatol... Insane power creep when it comes to Pokemon. Definitely God tier legendary Pokemon. God tier for a fact, number one. Number two, the plot was actual dog water, dude. Lysander has so much potential. Dude just suicides, bro. Like, what the fuck? Hit the button, bro. You, you, you build it. He literally dogs you to build a machine, bro. What happened? Dude, also the plot is empty for 90% of this game. You have, oh, here's me. You get a little bit of interest in the plot when you're Lumios. Cool. This seems like it's going to be a lot of potential, guys. Next thing you know, Gap, six badges in. You don't know what the hell's going on, bro. You really have no idea what's going on. Then, boom. Next thing you know, it all just hits you, bro. I'm just like... And even then, if it hits you, dude, like, the plot is actually empty. It's very, very empty. The admins were very lazy. The admins were extremely lazy. They didn't do much. The Pokeball Factory admins were just kind of... That was the only thing that they did. Like, yawn, dude. You know, actual yawn, bro. There was the Kalos Power Plant and the actual Pokeball Factory where those were the two notable things that they did. And even then, it was very yawn because their designs were very lazy. Their plot was very lazy. The actual, like, development of those characters, extremely lazy. The weight of them was lazy. You look at those admins and then compare those same admins to, like, let's say... Oh, I don't know. Like, 
what's a good example? Compare those admins to like Mars. You know what I mean? Or like Saturn. That character goes from Diamond and Pearl. Like, they, they have way much more weight. You know what I mean, dude? Way much more weight. You know, lots more weight. You know, or even compare them to the sages from Black and White who actually give you some like depiction on what gets his morale is, dude. You know, or ends like his. It's, it's cool. If you actually pay attention to the tech, it's cool. So, I don't know, man. Regardless, these games, they could have been easily the best. The Mega Lore is one of the coolest lores in Pokemon. If I were to just label everything here, I think the best lores here, period, is the X and Y lore of the Mega Lores and the War and Sun and Moon's like alternate timeline dimension of the universe lore. Those are the two cool things on its entire list. Regardless, though, it was actually dog water. It was empty as fuck. This region was empty as doggy dick. I don't know, man. All right, and last but not least, the Sword and Shield lore. Um, the plot, at least. I think the lore is better than the plot. It's kind of like X and Y, too, where the lore is actually better than the plot. Um, I think Crown Tundra could have carried it to mid, but I like I realistically, I would even argue if somebody did put it in mid due to the Crown Tundra, because the Crown Tundra plot was really, really, really good. That shit was... I, Crown Tundra actually saved Sword and Shield for me, at least. But I think the real thing that really kind of downplayed it was the fact that like you didn't really see more adaption. Uh, Chairman Rose could have been like literally one of like, the greatest like villains ever, but it was just kind of underwhelming. You know what I mean, dude? It was very, very, very underwhelming. You know, like had he of let's say I don't know, like maybe uh, was like more a part of Eternatus. You know what I mean? Like a lot of, a lot of people complain that we weren't as involved. Which I think, again, here's another hypocritical thing. People complain that we weren't as involved with the whole Chairman Rowe thing and it kind of just hit us in the face randomly. But when we are involved, like in Diamond and Pearl and Platinum, when you're in Distortion World, people hate that because Cynthia doesn't do it, the champion. But when we're not involved because we're 10 years old and Leon, the champion, is involved, taking care of it from the background, there's literally explosions. There's literally explosions in the towns and Leon takes care of it and not us. What do people want? I just said people love to complain. What do people want? I thought this was what y'all wanted. Game Freak listened. I don't know, man. Regardless, I do think that these games definitely had a lot of potential. Um, I think the whole like battle against like, Eternatus was very, 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 very cool. I thought that was very cool. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would I think the thing that really holds it back for me, dude, is the whole Chairman Rose being unrealming. I, I genuinely believe that. I think Zashi and Zem are really cool legendaries. I think them going up against Eternatus is really cool. They're mainly just like it, it, it has the whole like ancient like ancient like England like you know like the whole medieval times of like kings and queens and knights and stuff which is really cool dude and Eternatus which is this alien you know what I mean who's coming down and all these people don't know jack shit about aliens dude I mean the lore has literally really been depicted and written differently people don't, people think the king was a real human being it was Calyrex people didn't know it was Cal it was Calyrex because in Crown people forgot about Calyrex so I thought a lot of it was cool but also that a lot of it was kind of underwhelming, and I think that's what kind of holds it back. I think that's what truly is holding it back. Yes, I do actually believe that the plot in uh, I know, I know, guys, it's crazy. I might come back to this. I might come back to this video and actually change my mind on it, maybe in a year. But for right now, I do genuinely believe that the Gen 1 plot is actually better than the Gen 8 plot. You know, at least there wasn't any underwhelming. Uh, characters at least in that right even though there wasn't much characters in it the characters in it i felt like they were that really underwhelming giovanni was it was enough the word is enough you know what i mean general plot was enough it wasn't god tier it wasn't ass it was enough you know what i mean it wasn't empty like x and y it wasn't fucking god tier like sun and moon and black and white right but it's definitely a lot more than gen 2 which has almost next to no plot and Sword and Shield, which has a very underwhelming plot. It kind of felt like XY2 with the plot, where you have this giant threat and nothing really happens with it. It's kind of underwhelming, you know, dude? I thought it was really cool when you face g max and you actually get to see, like, all, like, your past experiences. It's, like, floating in the, in the, like, the, the freaking sky, dude. This guy is really going to destroy the world. Destroy the world, by the way. Destroy the world, planetary level. So, because he's at, at, at most planetary level, but at minimum, he's multi-country level. So, yeah, I don't know. Like, Sword and Shield... Um, maybe I gotta get on the playthrough. Maybe I'm sleeping on it. But regardless, dude, I just genuinely believe right now to my heart that, especially the post game as well, too, that the, the plot is kind of underwhelming. I think the characters uh, were really cool. I mean, seeing the development of Hop and Bead was really, really cool. Seeing Sonya have a huge, huge role, I thought that was really cool. I got to see some really cool girl representation there. You know, Juniper was great girl representation. You have Dawn and May, great girl representation. You know what I mean, dude? People love them. A lot of girls looked up to them. You got to see Sonya, who she actually is a genius. She is a worldwide genius right because she figured out the puzzle that nobody could figure out by the way for thousands of years number one number two she actually takes on the role of her mother magnolia and becomes a brand new professor which i thought that was really cool it's never been done before in pokemon 
That was cool. Not even God tier, but it was cool. Yeah, she just figured it out. I don't know. I just thought that was really cool that she figured it out, dude. That was really tight. You know, that was really, really, really cool that she figured it out. See, developing a hop. Oh, also, and Sonya is a legendary trainer, by the way. She, at at best, was actually even with Leon. Freaking Opal says that. Like, they were literally uneven. That was cool, dude. So, I don't know. Seeing the rivalry as well, too. A lot of good characters came from it. I think the really thing that kind of held this thing back from being at least made or hella good is the Eternatus plot. I feel like the Eternatus plot was kind of messy. That's why I feel like it was like Xerneas and Evoltal, too. The Eternatus plot was kind of messy. People depict the, the, the Mountain Hills as either GMAX Eternity or GMAX Eternatus. There's multiple depictions of it. Literally. Literally, dude. Um, I mean, it looks a lot like GMAX Toxicity, so I'm on G team GMAX Toxicity, but a lot of people also believe that it's GMAX Eternatus, right? You never actually get a GMAX Eternatus as well, too, which is kind of Resident Sleeper, right? Because you get Ultra Necrozma, right? You get Mega Rayquaza, right? You get Origin Form Giratina. You pretty much get all these OP things. The Primals, you get them all. But for whatever reason, you don't get GMAX Eternatus. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Ultra Necrozma is stronger than GMAX Eternatus, lore-wise and factually competitive-wise. Debatably, actually, that one's debatable. That one's debatable. But regardless, I, you don't really get to use it. So I don't know, man. That, that was really kind of underwhelming. But um, regardless, though, it was decent. Like the characters were really, really solid. I think this is decent. You know, I, I would even say decent. Some like I, I even like I, I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it was, it had a lot of potential. And you know, I feel like if they added on, I think the, like I said, the only thing that kind of holds the thing back, at least for me. The Eternatus spiel, it kind of hyped it up to seem like it was just really cool thing, and it kind of just felt underwhelming. It was kind of messy. That was at least for me. You know what I mean, dude? I don't know, man. Sword and Shield is really picky for me. Like on one hand, the Eternatus story is kind of messy, but on the other hand, they had really cool like little tropes, like Hop actually developing. You know, you got the slap on his like his cheek, like his brother Leon did. He kind of broke out of the shadow of his brother Leon. I really connected with that, dude. You know what I mean? Like not because I relate, but because it was really, really, really good. Like that was really good. That like Hop is one of the best rivals we've ever gotten in Pokemon. A lot of a lot of people call him a failure, but dude, the, to like. He, he just wasn't meant for it, you know what I mean? So I guess people are entirely wrong, but he wasn't really a good battle. He was certainly a failure at being a trainer, but being everything else, he's fantastic on it. I think he was just trying to go down the wrong route, and I think people kind of overlooked that. You know, seeing characters going down the wrong path because his path is really built from the day he's born because his brother is so gifted. It's really Itachi Sasuke all over again. Like, you know, literally, like, he wasn't built for that. You know, he just wasn't built for that. So... I don't know, man. Like, it was a really good plot with Hop. And that's the, I, the big reason why I don't want to put this in eh. And I want to put this actually in mid. I would even debate hella good sometimes because it, it's a messy game, dude. There's so many things that are hella good. There's so many things that are eh. There's so many things that are... I gotta put it in mid. I gotta put it in mid because there's a lot. There's a lot that's good. 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 A lot that's good. There really is a lot that's good. I think the post game actually, you could, you could debate ruins it. Um, because Thorbert and Schilbert, like... Ew, what are what what is that? What is that, man? But I don't know, guys. Listen, Sword and Shield is really, really hard for me. It, there's a lot. It's, it's a mess. You know what I mean? Does anyone else relate? It's a mess. Like, I don't know where I'm going to put these. I think for now, I'm going to put this in mid. Now, obviously, this is going to change. I think a lot of these, and by a lot of these, I mean only a few of these will change over the next, like, year. But I genuinely believe Sword and Shield will change. It will either go up, it will either go down, or it will stay. That's for Sword and Shield with me. For now, though... I don't know, man. For now, it just... I don't know. I, I gotta put it in mid. I gotta put it in mid. Because actually, Hardcore Survivor has literally no plot. You can't have a bad plot if you don't have a plot. <laughs> like, you just don't. You literally don't. The Team Rocket shit is a continuation. And it's actually worse than it was in general. And it's worse. So, realistically, guys, I'm pretty confident in this. I'm not gonna lie to you. I think the only people that are gonna be pretty upset with me here are Gen 2 fans. And again, Gen 2 fans, I'm, I'm literally... I could call your game bad. I could. But I'm not doing that right now. I'm saying the plot in your game is bad. And you can't even defend that. The plot in Gen 2 is not good. Let's go Eevee. Some people might call me hypocritical because I put Gen 1 in mid. Listen, dude. Trace is way more frequent in the game than Blue is, who's trying to rediscover himself as a trainer. Look, man. It's a div, bro. All right. I, again, the Mega Timeline and the, the whole brand new world being built. Definitely hella good. You know what I mean, dude? Cyrus is a great villain. Cyrus is a great villain, by the way. Cyrus is a great villain. Dude, Team Rainbow Rocket. I mean, come on. Usum is carried off that, dude. Literally. So, um, Lusamine is one of the greatest villains we've ever gotten in Pokemon history. I will kill anybody and fight anybody for that. Um, but yeah, no, straight up, I genuinely wholeheartedly believe this, and I'm all for discussion. I think when it comes to discussion for this, you don't have to attack. You can talk. A lot of people just come into discussion with a lot of angry and negative emotions. I'm always down to talk, but I genuinely believe that this is it. Now, 
when this video goes out, I did want to read the comment section like on a stream and see what everyone wants to say and like debate it all. But cause I just love talking about Pokemon plot. I just love talking about Pokemon. I know a lot about it. But regardless, though, I do believe that this is it for now. I'll do this video in, again a year from today in 2022 and see where that changes because I'm playing Sword and Shield again this month. Come soon. Wait on that. Regardless, though, I do think this is where I stand. Guys, let me know what you think. Do you agree? Do you disagree? This is plot, by the way. So if you mash A button, I don't even want to hear your thoughts because people don't even know that Silvali is a legendary or that Cosmog and Solgaleo and Lunala are, are Ultra Beasts. I, if you're one of those, please don't even waste your time and comment in my comment section. I want genuine discussions, boys. Genuine discussions. Pick the merch, link's in the description, and I'll uh, see y'all.